Okay, we now go back to the story on APC convention. The Eagle Square is a beehive of activities. That's because preparations remain in top gear to ensure the APC uh, put everything in place for a successful outing at their convention tomorrow. Party delegates, journalists, and food vendors are all there as well. They are observing work in progress. Members of the convention organizing committee are all on the ground to supervise the work as it progresses. We brought you a report earlier, and now we have joining us our guest uh, on the primetime news tonight to take a look at uh, issues around the convention is Victor Okai. Mr. Victor, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Good evening, and thank you for having me. Brilliant. Uh, it's been a long journey to the APC convention. Now, they've resorted to consensus candidacy for all positions. What's your opinion? Well, um, a few things. First of all, um, you know, people are predicting that um, there will be an inclusion because it is uh, said that the party uh, is a party of uh, straight bed fellows, which means different uh, different factions within the party. But um, even even more than that is the fact that um, the issue of consensus kind of is expected. I mean that is the part where they have they I believe they have chosen because if if they decide to go through an election, um, then obviously they might have problems. As people as some um, analysts are predicting that it might just um, uh, mark probably the beginning of the end of what is today one seemingly one united party. Um, and don't forget this, the, the six are very high in this particular election. And what are these stakes? Um, first of all, the issue of um, the primaries are coming up, you know, it's assumed that um, whoever the where, whoever the, uh, the leaders are that emerge from the party will go a very long way in influencing who emerges as the candidate of the party. So the stakes are very high. Um, consensus may seem like a way out, but I can assure you that if it doesn't favor some parties, or if it's manipulated against some parties, then uh, it might just be the beginning of the uh, whole drama in the months and weeks coming ahead. Okay, uh, it, it might favor some parties, I mean, not favor some parties, within the same party. Uh, so that leads me to the next question. Now, how fortified, are you saying then that they're not well fortified uh, for victory in 2023? Um, to be fortified for victory, you need a united front. Um, it means that all hands must be on deck. Um, no matter how strong you are, no matter how powerful you are, if your house is divided against itself, then obviously, way into battle, you just will see your time and resources. Okay, now, uh, the president had a meeting uh, with all the 22 governors. Apart from their decision to opt for consensus candidacy, how else do you see the meeting impacting on the outing tomorrow? Well, um, the president still, you know, exercised a lot of influence within the party and the party members hope still that he excites the layer and he has a lot of goodwill left. I mean, so what they're looking at right now is if they cannot settle, then maybe um, they should ask him, I, I guess, who his uh, preferred candidate is so that they can go along with it. It's more like saying, okay, the casting, if we do not agree, then perhaps you can tell us who you, or you prefer and then we'll go with it. But in spite of all that, however it goes, I can assure you that uh, not everyone will come smiling at the end of the day. Okay, could you do a quick comparison of the uh, current APC and the APC of 2015 and 2019? Has anything changed? What are our observations? Oh, by the Lord has changed. Um, in 2015, um, and to a large extent 2019, um, there was the unity of what some have said, uh, strange bedfellows who were united in one singular purpose, which was to rout uh, the incumbent party at the time and the incumbent president, um, um, Jonathan. I mean, we were all united in that. And so it's like 
the proverb that says, uh, uh, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So it doesn't matter whether you don't agree on other things, but as long as you are united on that, then you, I mean, you come in very strongly together as one. That worked very much in 2015. And they came together and they were able to take over power. Uh, power sharing was not exactly to everyone's satisfaction, but they learned to deal with it. And in 2019, they could not afford to lose uh, the, the, the lead they had because um, they had a leader who, to a very large extent, uh, was able to guarantee a minimal number of votes. Google was still you know, pretty much there at the time, but I can't say the same for this time. And don't forget, there's no incumbent this time around. So it's more like, you know, it's, the game is open right now, and it can be anyone's game. And of course, you find candidates um, like Tim, for instance, with a sense of entitlement that probably they had a agreement that works for Warrior, and so it should be his turn. And of course, there are those who think, who feel that, okay, it's a turn to the Southeast, you know, all of those rooms should proceed to them. And then there are those, of course, who feel, look, I mean, it can go anywhere. This is something that is open. You know, anyone can contest. So you find all of these interests. So all of these are the things that are shaping, um, you know, the dynamics of first the convention and ultimately, um, and subsequently the primaries and ultimately the forthcoming general elections. Thank you very much. Earlier, you mentioned an implosion, a possible implosion tomorrow. We won't talk about that tonight. I will leave that for another time when you tell us about that implosion. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. Thank you. That was Victor High joining us on our primetime news. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.